Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful midsummer day here in the end times. I am back in the paradise somewhere deep in the Finger Lakes region of upstate New York where uh, the little dog and I have pretty much decided this is where we are going to carve out our little bivouac for the end times. And uh, I encourage anyone listening to this to come join. We've got, uh, well, I mean, counting me, if you count me, we now have four tribes members living within an hour of right here. So the tribe is growing in the Finger Lakes as more and more of us choose this as our last holdout against Mad Max coming up. But uh, it is a gorgeous Saturday, July 27th, 2019. And the little dog and I have been out living in the wilderness of the Adirondacks, and I have had the pleasure of not being in the Doomosphere for almost a week. So uh, I got a lot of catching up to do. I haven't even bothered with the mainstream media, you know, it's, uh, since it is Saturday, I'm kind of a dollar short and day late looking at uh, what used to be my ecological meltdown roundup rant, which I do every Friday. I have moved, again, I have moved my Manga Bay <clears throat> roundup, ecological meltdown roundup over there to Collapse Chronicles. So maybe I will have more than 50 people on the planet listening to the single most important roundup of Collapse every week. I might run over the headlines at the end of this rant, but I encourage you to go over to Collapse Chronicles to hear that one. And we're going to look at what's on the minds of the Center for Biological Diversity and those eco-Nazis over there at the Washington Post. Well, the little dog who was getting full of these little burrs. Good Lord. Dog. Oh, no. Are you happy with yourself getting 10,000 of these little cockle burrs? Anyway, you got chippies and froggies out there to get. We're going to let the little dog head out to get his chippies. But before I even dive into those two, I'm sorry, I cannot remember which Alert Tribes member sent me this story uh, from good old Business Insider magazine. I just want to touch base that Wednesday, this past Wednesday, three days ago, what is that, uh, Wednesday, July 24th, 2019, was by all uh, accounts the single busiest aviation, the single biggest, you know, number of airplanes in the skies over planet Earth in uh, recorded history, where according to this group who compiles such data, and they don't even factor in military aircraft, not even counting military aircraft, there were more than 225,000 uh, airplanes up there spewing their crap out all over the atmosphere three days ago, and as they claim that this number is expected to skyrocket, they said this, this record will be broken several times this year, uh, but a, a new record has been hit and just one more time for any chemtrail wackos reading this, the reason you're seeing so many more cap trails, you know, capitalism trails, is the number of airplanes spewing cap trails out of their exhaust pipes has skyrocketed, and you can expect the number of cap trails to double between now and 2050 if global industrial civilization does not collapse ASAP. But of course, there's some good evidence that it will 
do just that. And uh, so anyway, as I say, I'm going to put Manga Bay over in Collapse Chronicles, but let's go over to the Center for Biological Diversity, see what is on their minds. They're starting out on uh, good luck. You know, you, you, you got to cheer on the Center for all of their pipe dreams. Their, their pipe dream of the week is to uh, get a ban on petrochemical plants plastic pollution. Yes, that is like seeking a ban on breeders pollution, meaning their little planet nibbling. You know, petrochemical plants do what petrochemical plants do. Anyway, take it away. Outdated rules allowed plants that make plastic from fracked natural gas to discharge 128 million pounds of pollutants into U.S. waterways last year alone. That included more than 77,000 pounds of the most toxic pollutants, and the plastics industry is aggressively expanding. Uh, that's why the center and 279 other groups joined hands to file a legal petition demanding that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency set strict new water pollution limits on industrial plants that make plastic. Oh, uh, yes, this is Julie Teal Simmons, the center attorney who authored the petition. Quote, the EPA should not let petrochemical polluters spew one more ounce of plastic pollution into our rivers and oceans. We need rigorous new rules to control this growing threat to public health, marine life, and the climate. Oh, yeah. Okay, what they're doing now, instead of just making separate articles, they've started this week the center's courtroom roundup looking at all the various ways the Center for Biological Diversity is suing the Trump administration. Here is one. Uh, Tuesday, our attorneys went to court seeking an order to halt the bulldozers from breaking ground on the Rosemont Copper Mine in Arizona, which threatens to destroy habitat for rare wildlife including jaguars. We shall see what the judge has to say about that. Here is some lawsuit, uh, yes, suing the Trump administration over some endangered sagebrush lizard. Good luck to that. Uh, anyway, keep on suing, <coughs> suing Donald Trump, but we really do have some good news, unbelievably, coming out of uh, the western U.S., where uh, we are now celebrating the 1,000th California condor chick, uh, I just in the in my Collapse Chronicles Manga Bay Roundup, you know, talking about how they're going one, they want they're down to five of these birds over there in China, and then this new plans to uh, rescue Sumatran rhinos under a captive breeding program, and one of the handful of success stories. So, con California condors were down to 22 wild individuals in 1982, but uh, they started this very well publicized and controversial captive breeding program, 
and we now have over 1,000 California condors. As long as we're over there looking at threats to the Wild West, <coughs> here is an interview with journalist Christopher Ketchum about his new book, uh, This Land, How Cowboys, Capitalism, and Corruption Are Ruining the American West, in which Ketchum weaves together 10 years of reporting and decades of adventuring into a deeply political and deeply personal call to save the West's public lands yeah, in the Trumpo scene, of course, Donald Trump being the single greatest threat to the American West, <coughs> I guess, since uh, Buffalo Bill. <coughs> anyway. Good luck on saving America's public lands. <coughs> you know, guys, once again, <coughs> I have not coughed all day. Even with a glass of water, I cannot talk about Donald Trump without choking on my own vomit. Anyway, we will have to uh, get an interview lined up with this fellow ourselves. Anyway, guys, we're just going to wind up. Uh, let's just wind up with this story. Here's a bad idea. Yes, here's a bad idea. Letting more beavers be killed in Wyoming. If beavers got more protection, writes the center's Andrea Santarsi in the Jackson Hole News and Guide, Wyoming's rivers, fish, and fly fishermen would all reap the benefits. Instead, the state is planning exactly the opposite, to let more of these industrious natural engineers who keep rivers healthy be trapped for their pelts around Jackson Hole. And of course beavers are just one of the many species being slaughtered every year by the wildlife services, uh, you know, dynamiting uh, beavers in their homes, dynamiting their dams. You know, I've been kayaking all over uh, <clears throat> the Adirondacks and in virtually every pond that I've been kayaking around, I notice these abandoned beaver lodges. I, I'm not sure why, but I, I did not see one live beaver or any sign of one live beaver in the whatever three of these ponds that I kayaked in the Adirondacks and in Vermont. Same story. I'm not sure why, but uh, I don't. I did not see any freshly gnawed uh, wood. You know, little tree trunks anywhere. Uh, in, in the Adirondack Mountains. Uh, not sure what that is all about. But anyway, I've got a lot on my plate here. So let's go over there and do a quick rundown <clears throat> of the Washington Post Energy Envir and Environment Roundup. I'm not going to have time to hit it. Let's just Let's start over there in Europe. Europe heat wave smashes temperatures across the continent. The punishing and often lethal heat is afflicting cities and regions largely without air conditioning. This is the second major deadly heat wave to 
slam into Europe in the summer of 2019. And I guess it's just heading north into the Arctic. Uh, here's a story about how uh, <clears throat> Trump's environmental team there there's a there's a euphemism for Trump's horsemen of the apocalypse scrutinized for tighter control of public records even some republicans are concerned about the EPA's freedom of information act practices where the EPA is just not allowing anybody to access what are supposed to be public records. Okay, let's see. The news from Iceland this week. A glacier is dead and a monument will tell visitors whose fault that was. Researchers at Rice University have created a memorial for an Icelandic glacier lost to human-caused climate change. Another glacier from Iceland goes the way of the dodo bird. <clears throat> Here is this story. I have no time to get into this. Uh, the, the, this newest uh, th th this newest way the Democrats coming up to save the planet, I think this is the 100 by 50, uh, you know, talking about uh, how we're going to be 100% renewable energy in this country by 2050. Uh, this is kind of a <clears throat> another option to the Green New Deal, key House Democrats propose eliminating climate warming emissions by 2050, but that is not enough for the Green New Deal supporters. So what this is, this 100 by 50 is an, an even watered down version of the absolute joke of that lipstick on a pig proposal called the Green New Deal, which is already a joke. And here are these key House Democrats saying that uh, joke is, is, is not enough of a joke for Democrats. So they're floating this absolutely hilarious knee slapper uh, about saving the planet uh, in the year 2050. Okay, I thought Candida was uh, spread by not keeping your pecker in your pants, but apparently the deadly fungal disease may be linked to climate change. Candida auris was identified just a decade ago and has now been found in 30 countries on multiple continents. I'm thinking that, isn't that the STD that is taking out koalas? Uh, this is the Washington Post weighing in uh, on Donald Trump, you know, making fun of the plastic straw ban. And th this is one, guys, where Donald Trump just like with the uh, Paris Climate Agreement, is right for all the wrong reasons. Uh, it, anybody with the brain of Donald Trump understands that the plastic straw ban is a fucking joke. Talk about uh, lipstick on a pig. Of course, the plastic straw ban, all of these joke plastic straw bans are not quite the lipstick on a pig that the Paris Climate Agreement or the Green New Deal is. Trump does not get the point of plastic straw bans 
pollution experts explain it to him. Hmm. Plastic straws can become particularly pernicious pieces of waste. You know that famous picture of the plastic straw rammed up a sea turtle's nose. And, and, and guys, do not get me wrong here. I 100% support plastic straw bans, all right? I am 100% in banning plastic straws. It's just that if anybody is clueless enough to believe that banning plastic straws is going to do a goddamn thing about the plastic crisis on this planet, you might be an apocaloptimist. And uh, here is some, you know, I, I don't even have time to keep up with all the people getting fired or quitting the EPA. But uh, for the few people left in the EPA, what are they up to this week? EPA will not ban the use of controversial pesticide linked to children's health problems. The EPA rejected a petition by environmental and public health groups to ban the controversial pesticide chlorpyrifos. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what all this is about. Top Trump officials tell Bureau of Land Management staff most of them must leave D.C. by the end of the year. There you go. And I guess uh, the Washington Post is offering a new newsletter, Speaking of Science, a new newsletter uh, detailing the latest, greatest, and weirdest in science news every Wednesday. I think we will sign up for that roundup every Wednesday. But while I'm waiting for that uh, to come through, uh, we're going to go over now, as I say, I have the uh, full, uh, the full Manga Bay roundup over there on Collapse Chronicles. We're just going to run down the headlines for those Humpty Dumpty tribe members with too much ADD to go here. The full rant here is Coco and Gunshots. The, the joke struggle to save a threatened forest in Nigeria. And then, uh, I don't even know where the island of Mindoro is about some little dwarf cow being obliterated off the planet. Back to the shithole country of Gabon, talking about linking uh, illegal logging in Gabon to uh, clueless moron consumers in Europe. Uh, here's an article about some giant palm oil firm, Corindo Corporation, getting booted out of this joke forest stewardship. You know, to get booted out of the forest stewardship council, you have really got to be a, a planet eater. I love the the this headline asking the question where did the birds go and uh, I really want to thank Manga Bay for this story very similar to the one uh, the two out of sub-saharan Africa going to the Amazon rainforest pointing out that planet nibbling otherwise known as small scale farming by these people who just wanna I just wanna feed my family. Small scale farming is a big threat 
to biodiversity in the Western Amazon and everywhere else on the planet. And then uh, they carry on the same theme as new roads in Papua New Guinea may cause quantum leap in forest loss as Papua New Guinea intends to nearly double its existing network of roads over the next three years. Here's an article looking at protecting Antarctica from the resource wars. Good luck on that. Here is some uh, article on uh, the next human pandemic. Yes, the next human pandemic. More about forest fires in Indonesia. The fire season is underway again this year as large companies and small holder farmers are setting the forest ablaze. Yes, here is a story about captive breeding of Sumatran rhinos. You better hope that works as well as it did for the California condor. You can kiss the Sumatran tiger. Here is a look at the fact that the abundance of our food supply is diminishing with worrisome consequences for global food security. Uh, here is how Indonesia is taking care of its plastic crisis by just burning the plastic to create more uh, electricity, which ties into the bigger uh, story. Fears over Indonesian President Joko Widodo's demand for un- fettered investment in Indonesia. As environmental activists say, the country is headed down the same path as Brazil under the presidency of Jair Bolsonaro. We have Joko Widodo on one hand, Bolsonaro on the other. Don't forget Donald Trump uh, here is yet another story about these absolute joke deforesta zero deforestation uh, corporate greenwashing pledges. The anybody uh, who thinks for one fucking second that uh, these giant global corporations are doing a goddamn thing to eliminate deforestation. Their entire corporate bottom line is dependent on more deforestation. In case you missed the email, June 2019 was the hottest ever on record. Uh, you will never believe that we have corrupt police uh, officials caught taking bribes in a Peruvian Amazon National Park. Right next to that story, we go from the shithole country of Peru to the shithole country of the Republic of the Congo, where the Congo government opens national park to oil exploration by French oil giant Total. Yes, cops taking bribes in the Amazon, uh, sub-Saharan African national parks opened up to oil drilling. Here is some giant new seaport on the coast of Colombia getting ready to fuck sharks, nesting sea turtles, and humpback whales. 
guys, anyway, I think we get it. I could go on and on and on with this, and I have not even gotten over to the mainstream media to see how completely fucked we are on this planet in the summer of 2019 while I have been out kayaking in the Adirondacks. But I need to wrap up all of this uh, doomsday bullshit and get out there into the Finger Lakes to enjoy it while I still can. So if you see this little sliver of green here, that might, might be the property where Hambone and Sancho are going to live out their days in their little bivouac in the end times in the Finger Lakes. Come join us in the Finger Lakes to survive the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous day on the planet. Bye guys.